bankruptcy. A stunning fall. Major restructuring debt is piling up. Companies are filing for bankruptcy now at the fastest rate since 2020. When Toys R Us went under in 2018, it seemed like the end of an era for a childhood icon. I don't want to grow up fun. Toys for us kids. They got a million toys and toys for us. But for one man, it was just the beginning. While families mourned the loss of a beloved store, CEO David Brandon was plotting his next big move. With over $3 billion written off in debt, you'd think Toys R Us left him out in the cold. But just two years later, records show Brandon walked away with a cool $8 million package. That's right. The man who oversaw the demise of a retail titan ended up almost tripling his money. So how did Brandon profit so handsomely from failure? Join me as we uncover the insider strategies of letting executives like Brandon use bankruptcy as a golden ticket. I declare bankruptcy! As more companies go under, it's time to question who the real winners are when the lights go out. We'll explore the legal loopholes that make failure a lucrative option and how bankruptcy courts have become a playground for well-connected Wall Street players. By the end, You'll be left wondering, if profit can be found even in disaster, then who really loses when companies fall? Now that I've got your attention, let's set the stage on just how big of a bankruptcy boom we're witnessing. The numbers here are staggering. So far in 2022 and 2023, corporate bankruptcy filings have exploded to the highest levels we've seen in almost 15 years. According to S&P Global, more than 230 companies have filed for bankruptcy so far this year. High-profile retailers that have done so include Bed Bath & Beyond, Party City, Tuesday Morning, and David's Bridal. Last week, more companies filed bankruptcy in a 48-hour period than at any time since at least 2008. According to the latest data from the American Bankruptcy Institute, over 26,000 commercial bankruptcy cases were filed in just the first six months of this year. That represents a massive 40% increase compared to the same period in 2021. Make no mistake, we are in the thick of a full-blown bankruptcy bonanza. Bankrupt! Bankrupt! Leading the charge among household names are retailers who've been crushed by inflation and shifting spending, iconic brands like Bed Bath & Beyond and Party City threw in the towel in 2022, and even staples like electronics maker Instant Pot and kitchenware giant Pyrex have ended up in court. But while the demise of big box stores grabs the headlines, an even bigger wave of failures is rippling through Main Street. Data shows the majority of bankruptcy cases stem from small, independent, or regional firms. We're talking restaurants, manufacturers, construction companies, and more, the backbone of local communities. The American Bankruptcy Institute reports 1,500 small businesses filed for subchapter five bankruptcy so far this year alone up until September 28th. That's the number of businesses that closed their doors in all of 2022. Small businesses account for around two thirds of filings. That's devastating, considering the crucial role they play as employers. With Main Street sinking under the weight of debt, the ripple effects are being felt across our entire economy. So what's really fueling this surge in corporate debt? We know bankruptcy is booming, but what really lit the fuse? To understand the detonation happening across corporations, we need to rewind to the early days of the pandemic in 2020. With whole industries in lockdown and revenues drying up overnight, the Fed took unprecedented action. They slammed interest rates to historic lows near zero, making it dirt cheap for companies to borrow. There are growing hopes of an economic stimulus package in the United States to counter the effects of the COVID-19 outbreak. The optimism follows the surprise decision of the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. It's the first time the U.S. Central Bank has cut rates in between scheduled meetings since the 2008 financial crisis. And boy, did companies take advantage. With access to easy money, entire balance sheets got padded with piles of new debt over the last few years. According to data from the Federal Reserve, non-financial corporate debt ballooned by over $3 trillion during this time to a massive $11 trillion total outstanding. Super low interest rates have allowed companies to delay their debt payments. However, as rates continue to climb rapidly, the Federal Reserve has raised the interest rate to over 4% in order to combat inflation, and it is expected to increase even more. We are prepared to raise rates further if appropriate and intend to hold policy at a restrictive level. This has led to a significant increase in borrowing costs, 
making it difficult for companies with debt to refinance, leading to cash flow problems. It's really been building over the course of the last year. Interest rates have increased, cash flows have declined. The current situation has resulted in over $200 billion in distressed corporate bonds trading at cents on the dollar. As a result, the retail sector and other industries are struggling with the burden of this debt. With a growing mountain of liabilities and interest rates straining balance sheets, we are witnessing a perfect storm brewing that may lead to more bankruptcies. Private equity firms have been heavily involved in the debt market by using the leverage buyout strategy. This involves buying a target company using borrowed money, resulting in a significant amount of debt on their balance sheets. Private equity goes in and buys these companies with debt in part because they don't have to put up their own cash for it. One example of this is in the hospital sector, where private equity firms have acquired around one-third of nonprofit hospitals in the U.S. However, their acquisition strategy involves borrowing huge sums of money at high interest rates, which has resulted in over half a trillion dollars in healthcare junk debt. This model works by having a private equity fund buy a hospital system for a price that is five to 10 times its earnings. They then finance the purchase by having the hospital take on massive loans, leading to budget constraints that result in spending more on financing costs than patient care. Which means these hospitals are forced to prioritize achieving sustainable profits instead of just focusing on community needs and public health. This is concerning as most hospitals operate on thin margins. As defaults rise in a high-rate environment, the distressed hospital sector is a clear example of the problems with this model. When loaded with private equity debt, the hospital's mission shifts from providing community services to avoiding bankruptcy at all costs. This sometimes means monetizing medicine itself, which is not ideal. A lot of executives profit from bankruptcy, and here's how some people have learned to take advantage of them. There are two main types of bankruptcy. Chapter 7, which involves a complete liquidation of assets to pay off debts, and Chapter 11, which provides the opportunity for rehabilitation through ongoing operations. However, certain executives have discovered ways to exploit the Chapter 11 framework, which is designed to restructure debt and avoid complete liquidation. When a business declares Chapter 11 bankruptcy, essentially what happens is I submit a plan. I submit a plan to all your creditors and in the hopes that we can agree on how to streamline the business, get rid of the debt we can get rid of so the business can survive and function on a much more healthy basis. By taking advantage of suspiciously tailored loopholes and exemptions buried in bankruptcy law, these individuals can end up richer than they were before driving their companies into bankruptcy. The secret lies in the legal concept of incentive pay, which allows professionals overseeing a failed company, such as lawyers, consultants, and accountants to receive hefty paydays. Shockingly, even the leaders whose mistakes led to bankruptcy can receive fat severance packages and multi-million dollar bonuses, all approved by the courts. You remember MF Global? Now that's the company that John Corzine sunk with a torpedo. He lost $1.6 billion with a customer funds, and he still gets over a million dollars in bonus he still gets $3 million in cash compensation. Worse still, investigations have uncovered undisclosed side deals, such as backroom asset stripping, where key assets mysteriously disappear into the hands of insiders right before a Chapter 11 filing. It is evident that some view bankruptcy not as a business failure, but as an opportunity to walk away with riches while leaving others to suffer. Perhaps you're wondering why companies file for bankruptcy if they are already on the verge of failure. However, bankruptcy is not necessarily the end of the road for businesses. In fact, it can be the start of a new and exciting chapter for some. The beauty of Chapter 11 filing is that it allows struggling companies to eliminate their debts while providing them with an opportunity to restructure their business. This can include negotiating more affordable lease rates, extending debt maturities, or terminating expensive union contracts that were previously weighing them down. Once freed from these burdensome obligations, some businesses are able to rise from the ashes of court protection and emerge stronger than before. Can a Chapter 11 case save my business? Yes, it can. A prime example is the media group, Vice Media. After filing Chapter 11 in late 2022, they emerged with hundreds of millions in debt erased from their books. Freed from liabilities, they're now giving their print magazines and TV shows yet another try under new ownership. 
And it's not just businesses getting a second wind, executives do too. Remember how we said those crafty bankruptcy laws set up golden parachutes? Well, that payout lets some fail-prone leaders just rinse and repeat at another target company down the line. Repeatedly getting rewarded for repeated failures shows just how divorced this system is from basic accountability. By now, it should be clear that bankruptcy risks are spreading far and wide, but some sectors are teetering on a knife edge due to vulnerabilities exacerbated by rising rates. First and foremost is retail. We've already seen a massacre among shops, but much worse may be coming. Between inflated costs, low inventories, and frugal customer habits, many retailers simply don't have the margins needed to handle higher interest on billions in store leases and existing debt. Bed Bath & Beyond filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in late 2022 after its pandemic gains were erased. It has since closed around 150 stores. Meanwhile, JCPenney has closed over 800 stores in the last decade as sales migrated online. It filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2020. It's clear America has a bankruptcy problem. Well, that's it for today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.